The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show. It's brought to you with Levi Solicitors. There's a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Three of us in today. Dan with you along with Michael and Moscow White returns. Nice to see you back, Moscow. This is available on YouTube where you'll see that Moscow is just dabbed uh, and the audio version where mercifully you won't have. And um, this week over on the Extra Ball part of our TSB Plus membership package, we're going to be chatting about not the little scum bastard, but the big scum bastard, Rio Ferdinand because Calvin's probably about to leave us, spoiler alert, for a club record transfer fee incoming. So we're going to go back and look at when it happened before. 20 when... years ago. Is it really? It's 20 years ago, is that? Don't we feel old? Do you have fond memories of it? Um, No, not particularly. It was the beginning of the end, wasn't it? It was. And uh, over on the Extra Ball as well, there's a great visual quiz this week. You can see the dad's quiz mm-hmm. um, and uh, the most German-looking man <laughs> ever to have... Uh, Inhabited Germany. Something like that. Straight away who that is. Even from the description, it's right there. Yes. Um, Into it then, where we are covering off and reacting to all the big League United news um, across the summer weeks. Calvin Phillips then. He's off. We knew he was off. He's not agreed yet. But he's going. Man City may not be able to pay him what he wants. Mm -hmm. A change of agent might, you might just come in and go, this is madness. What what are you doing? Who was advising you? (laughs) Yeah, it's a bit sad, isn't it, really? I'm I'm pretty ambivalent to the whole thing. I don't know if it's just because I've been on this journey before, like Batty, and then obviously all the you know, the big fire sale after the Champions League and stuff. That all really, really hurt. This doesn't. It just makes me feel sad about football as a whole. Mm. It was nice being able to keep him for a bit, wasn't it? I think that's it's felt like it's been coming at some stage as this and I guess it's nice that we got to have him for as long as we did and we got to see that journey of him being recognised with England caps and all that sort of stuff because it felt it felt like potentially that would just happen when he'd already left once he left us and as it is we've got to enjoy all of that but yeah a bit we, depressing isn't it we got promoted as well which if you think back in the day with uh, Snodgrass and Howson and you know Bradley Johnson Neil Kilkenny Jermaine Beckford all the big hitters all the big hitters they got us out of League One but then um, I guess them and then the next generation Byram Cook Taylor um, Mowat Mowat didn't really go up but the um, they all moved on without us really getting anything out of them whereas this we got promotion and then um, anything after that there's not really much more. I mean we're not going to win the league are we how do you know yeah, I mean, the the fact that he stayed to get us up, I think, is massively to his credit because he could have left then, and admittedly it wouldn't have been a good move. It would have been a Villa style move, but he did stay then, and he he could have left and he could have got more money, and instead he chose to to try and get us up, and he stuck around for a year and was brilliant for a year in the Premier League last year. It went wrong, but everything went wrong. That is the pragmatic view though but that's not that's not the romantic view is it this is not why you got into football as a kid so you could be grateful that a player stayed for a couple of years before pissing off to a bigger not a bigger club but you know a bigger move for him mm, yeah he's gone to a poxy league one club that is basically <laughs> just sports washing its way to success and whilst he might get to play with the best players in the world and be coached by the best coach in the world it's not real is it it's not the, really it's not really man city the th- that's the thing they're not they're not man city are they no. they're not the man city we grew up with it's like, it's they're, like the, they're, a new, the, they're a new thing do you remember the US Olympic basketball team the dream team it's just that isn't it it's just like all the best players would we'll get all the best players in one go and send them all out there and win it <laughs> easy that's why it's kind of there is a, a romantic element from Calvin's point of view that it's him who has been chosen to be part of that because who would have thought you know when he made his debut at Leeds um, under Redders and we had the classic midfield the midfield was uh, Phillips Cook Byram and Taylor were our wingers um, that then a few years later a dream team this ridiculous sports wash funded um, maniacal feats of incredible footballers which you know there's the two things is one that it's all bought but secondly you know they are great at football um, and they want him and it's kind of sweet in a way certainly from his point of view I can't imagine why you'd want to turn that down and it's something truthfully we didn't expect four years ago people thought Lewis Cook was better than him people thought Vieira was better than him mm. and who's the one 
going for £42 million pounds to Man City in the end. Uh, 50 to 55, I think you'll find, well, yes. Michael. It depends, or doesn't is it? it? Well, let's, let's move on to that because the fee um, is one of the things that's kind of stuck in the craw a little bit with Leeds fans. I know it has with me. And I thought you captured the the thing quite well, the mood quite well, Moscow, when you wrote on the blog about it, like, they should just pay us some more money because they've got all the money in the world and they're daft sums and it's irrelevant because we never see any of it. It just goes out again to some more footballers and agents and stuff like that. But even still, it's like it's a reflection of where we are, isn't it? Because um, then we can give ourselves the best chance at this idiotic game. It just feels like we could have got more money out of them than this. They've got more money. And I can't help, I keep picturing a post-it note in like Brian Marwood's office or something that says, Calvin Phillips... 60 million question mark or something like that and we've just not part of it is looking at the, if it is 42 plus 3 and then you're thinking about the negotiations can we just have got 45 like it's not like Manchester City can sit there and say oh that other 3 million we're waiting for a check to clear we're like we, we might have it now There's we're doing another sponsorship deal we can give you that in a couple of years I get paid at the end of the month exactly just get 45 or even if it would been 45 plus 5 add-ons because three million for add-ons just feels because those things sometimes it'll be things like win the Champions League and see you see never win the Champions League because they keep messing it up because Guardiola can't do it with them so we might not even get that quarter of a million ever and it's feel like there's just those little bits where we could have made more of a, a splash with it and, and we needed to because um the nearest thing we've had to a strategy was when Jesse Marsh told Sky that the plan is to bring kids through the academy and then to sell them to massive clubs for massive fees and then reinvest that in the club. And we do that for 10 years and then we're competing for the Champions League. We've got the massive club part, but this isn't, it's a big fee, but it's not a massive fee. And when are we going to, and you have because, to- Because well, they pay 50 million for everyone, don't they? Everyone costs 50 million at Man City. Yeah. And we've got, it's less than Ben White. It's less than half of Jack Grealish. It's. I think um, you put it in the context of players we've signed as well, and you think, well, if Rodrigo's 29 and James yeah. is 25, like, I, you'd trade both of them for Calvin Phillips right now, wouldn't you? And you've got to um, kind of maximise the opportunities because if that is the model that we sell to massive clubs for massive fees, who's the next player that we're going to sell after Rafinha's gone? Um, and he didn't come through the academy anyway, but who's the next player that we're going to sell? for a massive fee to a massive to a Champions League finalist or a semi-finalist Brendan thing. Aronson well exactly but then we've had to spend a lot of money to get him in we could double our money on Brendan Aronson in f- three years two years mm. if he does a Rafinha that'll take him to being he's just turned 21 so 23, 24 that's about the age Gelhart could be there but you still you know he could still turn into a Jamie Forrester and end up at Grimsby but even if he doesn't um, he becomes sort of a tempting to a Champions League semi-finalist around the age of like 22, 23. So you're still talking four years away. So this is like the one big moment to really cash in on a 25 cap England international going to a Champions League semi-finalist, the, the champions of the country. It's the moment to really get as much money as you possibly can. And I feel like we've just left a little bit there that I mean, in the end, as long as we replay, like if we spend it on another player, it doesn't matter as long as we cover that player. But then you're also like the five million that we're paying for the kids to come the other way. Maybe if there's another five million, we get two kids to come the other way, and then we've got two coming through the academy who could then be sold for these massive fees yeah. in the future. It's not romantic, is it? Though, as I was saying before, it's not much fun looking at it in purely practical and financial terms. Um, but equally. I think I used the word optics on a show recently because I watched Succession and they use the word optics in Succession quite a lot and it sounds cool. But the optics of it, how it appears, doesn't look great, does it? Even though we don't know what the detail is, we're not party to the discussions, we don't know if Phillips has said, well, yeah, I will leave, but it is only Man City, mm. which appears to be one of the stories that's mm. creeping its way out there as well. But, which I mean, then leaves Leeds over a slight bit of a barrel, but do you not then want Leeds to turn around and go, well, you've got a pony up or he stays, but I don't think I think there's a willingness to sell him as well. He is a notorious kind of home bird, isn't he? And I guess Manchester means he can stay in. He's bought a house in Leeds fairly recently, hasn't he? He can kind of stay there if he wants, or he could just buy, you know, a house four times the size over in Manchester if he wanted to, because I dare say he's getting a few quid out of this. There are the two sort of rational arguments for it being, for taking the lower fee is one that um, if he said he only wants to go to Manchester City, which is, yeah, you can imagine then you you can't spark a bidding war. 
But if we're following, the Leicester model is the one that always gets happened. They had that with Riyad Mahrez, who said, I absolutely want to go to Manchester City now. And they didn't let him. They kept him for a year. He turned out, you know, he spent a year being a total knobhead about it. But it, So it maybe wasn't the best idea in hindsight. But then they sold him for 60 million anyway, the next summer. So it can be done that way. And then the other one is uh, the Grealish... Um, release clause argument and say, well, Grealish went for 100 million because that was in his contract. And it's like, well, true, but a release clause isn't a magic spell. If Manchester City didn't think he was worth 100 million, they would have tried to pay less than 100 million. And it was the same thing where Grealish wasn't going to go to another club They could, and they could have done brinksmanship there as well and said, Grealish wants to come to us. He doesn't want to go anywhere else. We're not prepared to pay 100 million for him. We'll pay you 60 million now or he can come here for free in two years. So, just because you have that in, in in the contract, you know, we didn't have to pay sixty million for Heidi Sacco when it was his release contract. There's, there's we should have done. Well, there's ways around it. So, but those those are good arguments for why we didn't get as much for Calvin Phillips that we couldn't get a bidding war going, and we didn't have a release clause to say he must cost this much. But there are the other angles we could have then done some brinksmanship and said we're well, not having him uh, because um, we're just not going to let him go full stop or. Um, we don't have a release clause for him, but his value is X. And if you don't pay X, you don't get him. And then if they don't uh, want him that much, then you just move on and he plays football for Leeds for a bit longer. So there's ways around it. And it's kind of, I suppose it's like not wanting the club to be seen as a soft touch in the future if this is the model they want to go down. Because I wonder if Barcelona are looking at all this and going like, well, we were going to pay them. They keep talking about 50 million for Rafinha, but if they're taking 42 for for Phillips, let's lowball them. Is the truth of this not that ultimately we've actually probably got a club that's a willing seller and the reason for that is because we don't have a wealthy enough owner to have built on the ninth place finish and go, tell you what, we'll pump another another hundred million into it and try and um, consolidate a top half finish and build a side around Phillips and Rafinha. You look at it and you go, well, it's a two-year transfer plan that was made clear to us. Um, so they opted to stand still for the second season after we were up. And I think as soon as that was the policy decision, um, that's when you're, you're effectively saying we're, we're prepared to lose these two big players in another year's time because we haven't built on what we had. Um, we've actually ended up going backwards quite substantially, which has harmed it as well. And really, it's just because Radrazani is not wealthy enough. Well, they've they've talked it? about the Leicester model for a while, though, haven't they? Yeah. And, we, and that hasn't been the model under Radrazani because we haven't sold anyone. Mm. There is no one has left for anything like decent money. Uh, Roof went for a bit. Janssen went for a bit. But no, one, there's no one who has bankrolled a transfer window in the way that I guess we're hoping to this time, where you let two go and you maybe bring six in. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been the model until now. I should say though, I mean, I don't, I don't blame Radrazani for not having enough money because he's done well to get us to where we are I think it's just an objective truth about him as an owner he you know you look at the the pond that we're that we're swimming in now and if that's the model then fine I think the problem is is that with what happened last season all the trust has now eroded and also pre Bielsa all the stuff that went on then with Orta and the the club's policy at recruiting all the what turned out to be European landfill there's no trust anymore so we're now hoping that they reinvest it in a way that is good enough to keep us up and presumably be in a better position than we were last season yeah, I um, but I suppose the thing with just shoving another 100 million pound in is the profit and sustainability side of things is you start bumping up at that and you, if we keep and because we haven't sold anybody we can't just keep buying players forever without ever taking any money in so even if um, another 100 million had been spent on players at some point players would have to be sold to balance the books which is another argument for getting a bigger fee out of this one is because it gives you more room under profit and sustainability is you, you, you're balancing things that way and it gives you more room to actually pay more for more players um, in the future so it's why it's not just the it's the amount but it's what you're then allowed to do under the regs I mean the thing is wealthy owners though find ways of getting more money into that don't they, they do you'll see, I'm, I'm sure we'll see Newcastle do some favourable sponsorship deals well at they some haven't stage seen they've got the sleeve sponsor uh, um, Noon which is a Saudi Arabian company which is yeah. comes as a shock and but, that, like, but, like, that, but that's bigger than the value of their shirt manufacturing and shirt front mm -hmm. deals which again comes as a shock and the fact that Everton have managed to sell the stadium naming rights for a stadium that doesn't exist yet the option on that yeah. to 
someone for money it, like all that kind of thing that goes on and that's more it, it gives you options to to bend those rules as much as you want that comes down to commercial nous as well because one of the things with um phillips and rafinha going is that they're probably the two most marketable players you know when um jay-z's outfit came down and wanted to get involved with the the mural on the coals it's calvin phillips that they're they're putting on and he's the the star of the show he's the hometown kid and so uh culturally and because it's football as a result of that commercially probably the most valuable player at leeds is calvin phillips followed by rafinha with his brazilian profile so when you're doing a, a sponsorship deal with somebody who wants to come in and they say right well we want to give you uh, so many millions of pounds that you can then go and spend in the transfer market who are your big star players you say well Dan James is, is Bamford's this, got nice hair he's played for England he's this, got one cap this, this is where Radrazani drags out the Adam Forshaw tweet again <laughs> Adam, yeah you can I mean we can put Adam Forshaw at the centre of all the uh, the sponsorship campaigns I mean who's uh, who's uh, pop video did Calvin Phillips turn up in he was on live now with what's a face that that really Radrazani put on yeah um, so he's he's in that world where it's not only um, what he can do on the pitch but it's what kind of um, sponsorship he can attract to the club and then so it's again it's why you need to maximise the fee that you're getting for him is because how much are you trying to take into account of commercial income that you're cutting off because he won't be here mm -hmm. uh, to sell it well, good old football, isn't it? Jumpers for goalposts, isn't it? Boys well, in it. the park. I was going to say, you know, going back to the word optics again, and that uh, Darko Gabi, I think is Gabi, um, has come in the other way. And I think the announcement or the disclosure of this deal at the same time actually made it look worse because £5 million, everyone goes, well, that's, you know, that's it's a seventh, it's an eighth of a Calvin Phillips, is that when you, you know, factor in? It's 10 Joffies. Yeah. Um, so people have said, well, if he's five million, they're they're basically making us pay a premium for one of their youngsters. Whereas it feels like we haven't sold them Calvin yeah. at a premium. So it actually made, in the in the round, it made it look worse. But well, they, they've gone. For, they paid three hundred thousand for him, and they're selling him to us for five million. And that's what what we need to be doing. But yeah. somehow I mean, they, they're they paid, doing it to us. It, it, this is an illustration of how daft football is. I mean, they paid three hundred grand for him when he was fourteen years old and at Millwall. Like that's that's crazy yeah. in itself. Like. I know, I know he was well rated and everything, but the fact that he was basically trading children for like six figure sums is weird. And it's mm. it kind of this is a bigger subject. We're on the fringes of of talking down the entire model because uh, Phil Hay was reporting the other week that um, or this week, um, I think it was Phil that the shopping for academy players is more difficult at the moment because the market for academy players has suddenly gone boom because now it's I guess it's post um, Brexit isn't it all the rules post Brexit yeah. and there'll be because you can have five players on the bench now there's more room at clubs for, for um, them to say well we'll keep them we'll have that 17 year old on our bench and so they don't cost 300 grand for an 18 year old anymore who you think oh we'll get him into our academy and give him a second chance it's 300 grand for the 14 year olds who everybody's trying to get and then when you do want um, an 18 year old it's not you know did we pay a million for Sam Greenwood and it was half a million for Joffy because Wigan were um, on the it was, it was closer to a million million and two I think for the pair of them but I don't know for sure that's just a guess but it's five times that yeah. to get this 18 year old who you know he may be good but um, it's a bit of a worry the good players in Manchester City's academy are like Cole Palmer who you've heard of and the players who they spent absolute fortunes from uh, signing from Brazil as well um, but yeah there's kid bless him doesn't even have a wikipedia page or at least he didn't when um make him one when the news signed yeah somebody needs to sort that out for him because he's a bit of a, a diss i know he's got this um this guy saying he's good but you know that's <laughs> how good can you be if you haven't got a wikipedia page Moscow? well yeah, yeah it's true you'd think like some body would have found him on their football manager game and i like it so, so we've gone past the youtube um highlights reel now and into a, have have you got a wikipedia page therefore we're writing you off if you haven't <laughs> knowledge starts somewhere you've got to you've got to start learning it's like um i was always told to get the uh the ladybird book if you want to learn about something um but anyway he might be brilliant you don't know nobody ever says 18 year old academy prosper x are rubbish do they so mediocre academy yeah. prospect <laughs> it's, it's all right it's like we've got the the stuff from uh the football coach who's been in the yep um saying that you know he's got all the natural ability and the mindset and everything players need but you know well he, he's worked with him so he's gonna say that 
He may be brilliant. He might be my favourite player. In Described the as a complete number eight, though, wasn't he? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's exciting in itself. It's just almost unfortunately like, that it's framed around the departure of Calvin Phillips. Almost like it's an insult. I mean, from a, from a complete a, number eight. From a very brief YouTube highlights package, he likes a big diagonal ball. Oh, is he on YouTube? Of course he's on YouTube. Yeah. But no Wikipedia page. What's no, going no. on in the he's world? He's hitting some nice Calvin diagonals. So, who knows? Maybe he can just do that. On I mean, the YouTube other, here, he's in a lead shirt. Of course he is. Oh, has he already posed at the end for the video? The thing with Calvin leaving, part of me does go back to the idea of how he wasn't actually any good last season, mm. which we do have to address. Are you, are you, are you rewriting this now because you're disappointed? No, he wasn't, he wasn't any good last year. No. no he, he, even at the start of the year when he was... I, I know he had a, he missed the first game, didn't he? And maybe the first two, I can't remember, because he was yeah. having a bit of a, a post-England break. And then he was injured for an awful lot of it. But we didn't see the best of him last year. Even under Bielsa, I don't think he was he was of the level they had been the previous couple of years which you can say of absolutely all of them as well mm. but there is a little bit of me thinks well maybe it's not a terrible time to sell like it based if you were basing his price on last season it probably wouldn't be as high as 42 million but mm. we know how good he, he can be and it's who will be I mean playing with the best brings out the best doesn't it I th and I think where there is the one bit of romance in all this is from Calvin Phillips point of view because he gets to go and every single day he goes into training Pep Guardiola is teaching him how to be a better player. He's teaching him how to pass the bloody Erling Haaland. Yep. You <laughs> give it to give it to Kevin. He's going to give it to Erling and we'll score a lot of goals. And it's kind of, um, th that's a footballer's dream, really. Everybody's like, is he going to play, you know, 20 games or whatever? He goes to work with those players every day. And that's kind of... And also, you don't have to play 90 minutes every week because we've got other players who can give you a little rest now and then. And also, you don't have to do anything like as much defensive work because yeah. the rest of them are all as good or better than you so it won't reach you as much <laughs> I can see why he's gone to be honest I think we've talked I think, we, I think we've talked ourselves into it okay, yeah, it's, I've always I mean Manchester City were always the one that I thought if they come in for him that would be the one move that from Calvin's point of view you just have to wave wave him on and say well done it's, it's a little bit I mean it's such a weird thing because as you said at the start Manchester City I remember them in League One and I remember Jamie Pollock sending them down with his own goal and um, Niall Quinn playing up front for them and um, Terry Cook and all this kind of lot, Sean Gota. That's Manchester City and what they are now is a very different thing. Um, but there's a one club that made absolute sense for Calvin Phillips. Um, it just works from his point of view. And so um, it was always a matter of how do we keep him is one thing but if Manchester City come and say they want him it's then how much can you get for him and more than 42 million would have been probably a start as um, I think the uh, it's probably worth listening to what other people say for the uh, we've got this, our City Extra friends um, responding to the fee yeah we did the serious chat there Let's have a listen to our friends from Manchester. If you haven't heard these, by the way, we discovered them over on Propaganda, which is the show where we, we find out what's being said about Leeds and around the football world. And we discovered City Extra, which are the delightfully Mancunian, aren't they? They're and quite reasonable on old Calvin, really. But um, it is worth, it's kind of interesting. But, well, basically because we're not listening to somebody scoring a goal against them in a big game. So they're, they're a little bit calmer. Um, but it's quite interesting to get the City um, angle on, on Calvin moving. But no, I, I think this deal is a really, really good deal. I, I'm, I am surprised at the fee. I thought, I thought it would have been a little bit over fifty million. Um, so to get it for forty-two million plus this couple of million add-ons, whatever, I do think that's a pretty good fee. But yeah, they can't be too disheartened because at the end of the day, he was always going to leave, wasn't he, Calvin Phillips? Let's be honest, he was too good for Leeds. You know, what I mean, he needs to be playing for trophies. This guy he's a, he's a class player, so they can't be disheartened that he's left. He can obviously be a bit gutted and that, but he always knew he was going to leave. Um, and you know he's gone. He's gone to City. You know he could have gone United. That would have been a lot worse for him. Um, and you know you got you got him forty five million out of it, which for a guy with two years left on his contract, who's only played what forty two games over the last two seasons for you, I don't really think there's that much that you can be moaning about. The big people and that who are speaking about his deal saying that this is basically a steal for Manchester City getting forty two million pound. And it's weird now to say forty two million pound is a steal because. That still feels expensive, yeah. especially with the. I mean, the way the transfer market was, say, like like five, like ten years ago, whatever it was. Um, but right now, forty two million pounds seems to be a very, very, very good deal, and I'm so, so, so buzzing 
to see this guy actually put on a city shirt because I think I genuinely, genuinely think he's going to do very, very well, and I think he'll do very well from the off. Mm. There was a, I'd forgotten that there's that little bit in the middle where they're saying he's too good for Leeds. So I'm saying they're being quite reasonable about it, apart from the bit when they're being dicks. Yeah. But you know, that's them. That's. But this, this is what you do when you sign a player from another club. You can swing your dick around, can't you? And it's easy to swing your dick around when you're Man City and you've got you know the wealth of a nation state behind you. And also, it, they're sort of saying the things we said to a degree, but just being a bit more dickish yeah. about but it. But it's just not as nice coming from someone else, is it? It's the uh, it, yeah, it's that mild surprise of like we probably would have expected him I think they were saying elsewhere that if it had gone much over 50 they might have felt the way we feel that that's a bit too much the way that we're feeling it's a little bit not enough so there's probably the magic number would have been 50 million for everybody but yeah they're excited they're happy they think he's going to be great for them um, yeah this is sickening really isn't it they're not, they're not going to care about him in the same way that we do though and that's the thing no this is true and as, um, they, as they stream out when they're 4-0 up in the Champions League next season well they won't even have turned up if it's a group match will they yeah. they'd be Calvin will be reminded of playing for um, Neil Redfern's we'll, Leeds we'll pass him on the way up right half there. empty stadium <laughs> in the dark on the uh, Tuesday night playing in front of 17,000 people let's um, let's find out what Steve Nicol thought about this because Steve, Steve Nichol is a is a legend on this this podcast who if you're not familiar with who he is he's the dour former Liverpool defender from like the 1980s not happy with anything in life is he nothing crisps. he likes crisps he does like crisps. six bags a day we did discover this you know in those um in the uh, programs from like the 1980s or whatever they do like a player profile didn't they and he did an interview where he was asked what his favorite food was and it was crisp six bags a day and he would no six mm. bags back to back not a day yeah yeah <laughs> just chaining them yeah <laughs> yeah they're all ESPN. Main li- mainlining some ready salted ESPN did that little feature about players diets didn't they and they had his match day uh, <laughs> diet that included it's like <laughs> Several pints and just like so, several multi bags of crisps that would just uh, <laughs> Steve, your go salt, down. Your salt levels are off the chart. You need to stop. Anyway, he's still with us. He's an independent voice in this, though, isn't he? So they've uh, they spoke to uh, Nedim and Yuha before, and he's not actually too sure about whether um, City are getting a good deal here. But um, he's quite good. Is uh, is Nedim and Yuha? I've, I've heard him on quite a few things, and I'm wondering why he's not on telly because he's loads well, better. He is on telly in ESPN. It, here. I mean, when we can see him because he's, he's basically <laughs> better than all the pundits we have over here. He's, so well, someone, someone buy him, please. Well, I've edited him out of this clip <laughs> <laughs> because he was just being a bit of a misery about whether Calvin's any good or not. But fortunately, if there's uh, if you need somebody to set a misery straight, it's uh, Stevie Cheerful Nickel. So. Do you like this too, Stevie? I'm kind of surprised that Ned was not a little bit more upbeat about this. Okay. Because I like Calvin Phillips, and and I understand what he's talking about when he's when he's saying, well, he's playing for Leeds, and this is a team that lost a lot of goals. Mm-hmm. He's probably coming in as a defensive midfielder. So why, well, how does Leeds and defensive midfielder make any sense? But the truth is, I th- I think absolutely this is a great signing, and 42 million. It's it, it, it's not even a gamble. Mm-hmm. This guy's a regular in an England team, and when he plays on the international stage, he plays great. Mm-hmm. Is he going to get better? Absolutely, he's going to get better playing with the type of players they have at City. As I said, need them. Get a smile on your face, because I think this is a good signing. <laughs> <laughs> always capable of surprising us, Steve, isn't he? He's, yeah, he, he always um, yangs when you think he's going to ying. We should have sent him into the negotiations with City. He'd have got us a better fee than 42 million. Well, he's right. The, he's right. Though it's not yeah. a gamble for Man City because they no. they sign people like who are, who are forty million pound failures quite on well, the regular. Only well, Nathan Aki is the most um, comparable one. He was forty one million and he barely plays. Amazing. I mean, I mean, Mendy was fifty million. I think if you mm. if you're going to give a, a a real poor value for money comparison, mm. but they, um, for different reasons. Yes, they're selling uh, Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal for about forty million, aren't they? So they're immediately getting the money back. Yep. And then even Erling Haaland, his release fee from. Dortmund was on was it 60 million 60 like, million euro I think yeah, he's so. a real steal so again I think Alfie Harland's done pretty well out of that as well so again you're going into them uh, to negotiate and saying well we know you're getting that amount of money back from Arsenal you've paid nothing for Erling Haaland so why don't you pay us some of what you didn't have to pay to get the best striker in the world you, we know you've got the money we can see it's like you can see them <laughs> with a big pile of gold to do it another way could Alfie Harland buy some Leeds shares and put money in that way Get some of Man City's money back. I mean, Erling probably could. <laughs> Calvin could. Calvin could probably afford to buy Leeds United at some point. Anyway, it's all we've um, we've got some bonus Steve Nichol here, haven't we? 
Yeah. Because um, yeah. it's great value. I mean, at some point, we, we may have to stop leaning on ESPN's <laughs> YouTube clips of Steve Nichol, but this was too good to um, resist. They're doing a little feature because Wesley Snyder, the old Dutch international, was saying that if he hadn't been so um, into wine, he would have been as good as Messi or Ronaldo. And it's key to know they've already had Steve Nichol's answer to this question of... Um, how good Wesley Snyder uh, could have been or what he could have been if he hadn't uh, lived the, the way that his life was. And then they've cut to, to Craig Burley. So, um, yeah, this is Craig Burley talking about Wesley Snyder. There's no sign of that here in Wesley Snyder, is there? <laughs> Bit of arrogance. Could have been Messi and Ronaldo. I mean, goodness. Good grief. You, you, you must have seen him in his blood. <laughs> what? I was thinking of Wesley Snipes. <laughs> I'm thinking of Wesley, Wesley Snyder, the footballer. <laughs> I thought it was the actor. Why would he? I've no say idea. That? Well, that's why I said. Why would he say that? <laughs> that's why I said. That's, that's why I said. That's why I said. That's like me wanting to do what Wesley Snyder did. Did you not think that was a bit strange? <laughs> It's wonderful, Steve, the way he turns it into somebody else's problem. He's like, well, did you not think I was talking nonsense when I said that it's like me wanting to do what Wesley Snipes did? <laughs> Fisher and Blade. You should have known I was talking about an actor on a football <laughs> programme. Outstanding. Oh, good old Stevie. Good old Stevie. Let's, um, let's get through some of the tittle-tattle then um, and deal with, uh, well, Rafinha, Newcastle, apparently now interested, talking to sports washing. He's not going there, is he? You wouldn't have thought so, unless they... Barcelona can't afford him and Newcastle just go do you want like does, does a million pounds it, a week say, doesn't it feel like the only reason they would do that is purely for money because there's no sort of like it's not the Champions League achievement you feel like Rafinha has got a decent character can't necessarily say the same for Deco in my opinion but Rafinha want, he wants to achieve something and this is not the way to do it unless it's just a massive bank balance which I'm sure he'll get no matter where he goes so why would you forego the chance to play Champions League just for this well this is where Newcastle's uh, the angle that Northern Echo are reporting where they've said we don't want to pay 60 million for him but if he's going for less will you let us know and I don't know if that's kind of whether the the Phillips fee has alerted people to go like oh the big sale got going on at Leeds and that seems to be the way it's uh, being reported Northern Echo say Newcastle would not be willing to go anywhere near Leeds is current 60 million pound valuation of the winger um, but they intend to remain part of the discussion if his other suitors are also reluctant to meet that price. So they're basically saying, if he's going cheap, we'll have him. But, but if but, you want some if, money for him, no. If someone's forcing the price down, he's not going to choose Newcastle, is he? That's, no. about, that's about the size he's, of it, He's going to have much... I mean, we. it's only a week ago we were saying, he probably don't want to go to Arsenal, does he? And yeah. Let's face it, Arsenal are a, a far better prospect than Newcastle mm. at this stage. As much as Newcastle over the next few years will probably become a, a force because they've got a load of money but to, it's, it's to, going to take him to watch it's, it's going to take him five or ten years to get even anywhere near the top what six or seven so is Rafinha going to want to go you'd be, you'd be surprised if they've got if you've got unlimited money you can you can rise up pretty quickly I, you, I know that but so there's a lot of embedded clubs in there and like you said they're, they're going to come up against um, profit and sustainability as well in that because the clubs above them will make sure they mm. do mm. as well so it just I don't know just in terms of the timing where Rafinha is with his age and stuff it doesn't feel like he's going to want to spend four years on a on a maybe it feels yeah. like Deco is mercenary enough to, to get him into it's, a Champions League club one way or another or as close as damn it he's most likely out with still Barcelona and they're in the process of selling Scummer De Jong for somewhere between 60 and 85 mm. million so fine if we, Arsenal, we, we'll have that if Arsenal are the backup then that's sort of all right because you get Europa League and they're in that weird thing where us, they're building a good team again and if they get you know Gabriel Jesus and Rafinha and Ben White but then they'll still keep doing that and then they'll probably get relegated so it's, you can never tell where they're going to go um, but that's not a bad backup but I wish he'd just go to Barcelona because it makes it it's needed, needed for everyone mind. isn't it yeah um, yeah Take a smaller fee for him, <laughs> given all, everything we discussed in part one. No. Well, that would um, seem to please uh, Barcelona, wouldn't it? It so. would. Um, they need to just sort out the stupid, ridiculous finances and then pony up, and then we can move on. I'll tell you what it is, as well, going back to the discussion we had about um, how this looks in, in part one, selling both of your best players when you've got absolutely no trust uh, and selling one of them for not enough don't look great, does it? And it's a, it's it's up in the stakes on the gamble even higher. Mm. Yeah, it's not. It's, a good, it's not the Leicester model. Leicester never sold two in one in two of the best players in one window with basically no other superstars. And let's talk about how much Harry Maguire went for. Yeah, you know, if you're talking about overcharging or or selling 
at the height and you know to use Marsh's words again to a massive club I mean scum whatever but for a massive fee that's the deal Harry Maguire for 80 million whereas it's I mean Calvin Phillips is twice as good as Harry Maguire isn't he? he's going Mind for you, half as much Barcelona potentially in for uh, Harry Maguire not in for Calvin Phillips were they are they in for Harry Maguire apparently did you not see this story no this week? as round the discussions of De Jong it was apparently rumoured that they'd inquired about um, Maguire as some, um, sort of, some sort of make way some sort of joke yeah. it's since that we've said uh, since Leeds have said that we're not going to follow up on our interest in Phil Jones then <laughs> Scum are now prepared to let Harry Maguire leave uh, but yeah I just the Rafinha thing it feels like it's we need to rip the plaster off, don't we? And I, I suspect maybe that's what's kind of forced Leeds into taking the what feels like a slightly lower fee. We don't, like I said, we don't know the ins and the outs and why that's happened exactly. But um, the, the other thing with the fee is Man City might be willing to pay it all up front, whereas yeah. I think a lot of transfer deals are structured where you get it over the so course two, of two or three the years cost of the contract yeah. or whatever, as we did with Helder Costa, and I think we've done it with several players we've signed. Yeah. John Kieran Augustin for, for one we're, we're really staggering those, those it's payments that, it's back, that, that, backloading them there's no resolution to that which does sort of point towards maybe a bit of ambiguity around um, the, the cast verdict because it's dragging on and on and you do wonder they're, could, bit, they're could, busy people could could we tempt um, RB Leipzig say Tyler Adams you know you wanted like 15 million what if we give you 20 million and you make that go away Settle out court. We, yeah, we do a confidential settlement. No one accepts liability and it all goes away. Would you go for it? I, I don't. We, we don't necessarily have a choice of whether or not we go for it. I don't think with that, <laughs> that ruling. Mm. Although he's got another, because um, I still follow him in, on Instagram, he's done another nice jazzy signing video. I feel like he's he's done more jazzy signing videos than goals. Hell of a production team. He really has, yeah. yeah, he, got, yeah. he got one. At, I think he got one at Nantes as well when he went there. So he's had he's had three of those at his last three clubs. on a private jet. Do you remember it? It made him look like a rock star. It was all like shots of him going up the stairs and stuff. It was uh, in the dark. Yeah, it was great silly place. Anyway, let's talk about some nice fun stuff. We've we've done enough bloodletting. Do you want Charles to kettle hair? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because, Looks good. Yes. Fond memories of uh, Princess Diana. <laughs> if um, we do go into the market, that's the sort of level I want us to go in at. Not. The, and I know this is all really, really vain and based around prices, but if we are to reinvest in the squad and we have to take the medicine and sell both our good players, stop buying players who are like six, ten million. Get some that are like twenty and thirty. That's what I want. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, I mean, are you suggesting we should have paid more for some of the players we've signed? Rasmus Christiansen, we should have negotiated that to at least fifty mil. <laughs> But I mean, we'll soon find out if that's good value or not. And it, it looks like it on the surface from the outset, doesn't it? You think, oh, we've got a good deal there. Champions League football at that price, met the release clause that's and so on. Po, yeah. But I would like to see us go in and not just fill out the squad because obviously a lack of bodies this last year cost us. But I want us to see us improve the squad as well as fill it out. And you see someone like the Catalan and you go, yeah, he's good. But you never know though till they arrive. It's the old chili, no watermelons thing. Mm. It can look really good, but... This still might be crap when he gets there, yeah. but prob- probably not. The, and the more you spend, the less of a risk you take on that because the more likely you are to get someone who's close to a finished article if you're spending loads of money. I mean, you, you're asking who's the next one we're going to sell. It'll probably be him. We'll, <laughs> we'll bring him in this summer for about sell him in January. 30 million euro or something, or 35 million euro, and then sell him in a couple of years when he's 24 or whatever. This is the thing. It's the, the, the balance between kind of uh, potential and proven and so when I heard that we were going for a, like an exciting attacking player from the Belgian league I did think like we'll just bring Jordan Bataka back so I was delighted this guy looks good as well but he's a bit more of an unknown quantity than Bataka uh, <laughs> would have been you, we knew what we would be getting how old with is Bataka him. now? he's 29 is but he that's still what 29? I mean. when's his birthday proven. Moscow and did you send him a card? Uh, 24th of June so it's just a couple of days ago oh. I, I sent him a cake <laughs> um, he uh, but yeah the when I watched a YouTube compilation of uh, the Kettler, he looks great, but then noticed that kind of all the other players who were playing for Bruges also looked really good. Like, he's dribbling around a couple of Belgian defenders, um, let's call them all Laurence de Bock, and then he passes to his teammate and he dribbles around Laurence de Bock as well. So I'm like, they can't all be brilliant, so perhaps all the defenders are Laurence de Bock and that, but he's got a huge reputation. Um, he seems like he certainly fits the nice young man uh, category because he uh, um, is apparently too shy to go into his local baker's because he keeps getting recognised. So he starts staying home, and he uh, was studying law 
um, before he decided to concentrate on football. A thoughtful young man. Apparently yeah. still lives at home as well. There was talk of that, wasn't this there? This is it, yeah. He lives, with home his, lives with his mum. Does she want to come over, Mrs. DK? Get her over here? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's only from Leeds to Belgium. I don't think she'll abandon him. Never never darken our door again, Charles. Um, it would obviously up the Benny Lux quotient in the squad as well. Um, well, this is it. Outside Strauch. It's a lot of pressure because Stroik Strauch had a difficult season last season and you want him to to blossom this year. I feel like this puts a lot of pressure on him because um, the Kettler will obviously be encouraging him to play for Belgium. But we saw with kind of Van Dijk having a word with him after he uh, blew on Harvey Elliott's ankle. So there's a bit of a link to the Netherlands there. And I would prefer him to play for the Netherlands because then we're one Luxembourg signing away from completing the set. Mm. But then if he's got his new mate Charlie, he's like, oh, we have a great time at Belgium. You'd, you'll never believe what uh, the Hazard brothers were saying to the other week. It's like the japes um, are, are off the scale. You know, is it going to get in uh, Pascal's head and he doesn't know what to do anymore? So um, that worries me. Mm, it's a lot to consider, isn't it? But it is. You've got to weigh all these things up when you make it. What sound. I'm encouraged by is that we saw kind of some stories by journalists over there suggesting he wasn't that interested. And it sounds like he was always destined for Italy. But the story's kind of, it's persisted across the last few days, hasn't it? And um, you feel like it wouldn't be getting reported on. No smoke without fire is what I'm, I'm saying, which you can't apply to every situation. But there's an awful lot of smoke in the transfer window. Yeah. So I'm not sure that does apply. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like Milan have been the sort of presumed destination for him. Um, and then if Leeds are kind of trying to get in, involved in that, um, you might just dismiss that out of hand. But then two things. We've got a few things going for us. One, uh, money, hopefully. Um, I know everyone says Milan can outspend us, but... Um, can they? Can they? So there's a question. So should we say no, they can't? And then, uh, yeah, they've got Champions League football, but I think Champions League versus Premier League is a bit of a something that, pe that people can weigh up. Like Rafinha um, turned his back on, had wrong, got in the <laughs> Champions League. Certainly they were in the Europa League. <laughs> Tickles me every time. Yeah, yes, they, they, have, yeah. they just qualified when we, the, the, some, the season we spot in this. Yeah, so. and they were kind of kicking him out for whatever reason, but um, the Premier League does kind of make up for that and you are then showcased every week and it is kind of when he's he's 21 um, and there is that idea of like you have a couple of seasons in the Premier League that's going to be a better grounding for you than Serie A to get a move to one of the really big clubs you'll be at Chelsea and whatever in, in three or four or, years or we'll be massive by that time and you won't want to leave we need to keep this within the ground the, the realms of credibility otherwise he's just going to I mean he's he's studied law at least for um, he enrolled on a course and then quit maybe I don't know about which more detail he did than that but he's, we can't pull the wool over this kid's eyes if especially not with his hair already flopping if he, into it. if he studied law maybe he could come in and arbitrate the John Kevin Augustan situation because mm -hmm. he'll know about contract law create more work for him <laughs> FIFA yeah. he's the Euro Bamford as well have you seen him by the way he's very sort of, the Euro version of Bamford well this yeah. is it he reminds when I say he reminds me of Princess Diana sort of version 1 looks like when she started pitching up Gage to Prince Charles he's got that very kind of it's a bit of a composite drawing of a man isn't he he's like mm. all different you know and they've, they've kind of gone the eyes and the nose and they've done the E fit thing he's mm. got a slight look of that I hope it. so we want him yeah. um, we want uh, Adams and Kamara yeah or have both mm -hmm. Chris, Chris's lad um, you'd think he'd Cammy had put in a good word for us raised a Leeds fan played for the club I do like that little uh, that little narrative that's come out about um, Leeds viewing Kamara as a bit a bit pricey, a bit too expensive when they've just said they're <laughs> expecting to get 50 to 55 million for yes. Calvin Phillips. Mm, I mean, how much is how much is too much? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there is an interesting thing with the Kettler as well where he doesn't seem to be involved in the if we sell Rafinha or Phillips, we get him. It seems like he's the option to be Bamford's mate up front and then on top of a player being sold it's quite ambiguous the way it's being reported it's either he he's not the Rafinha replacement and he's not the Phillips replacement he is one of the strikers that they want to bring in whatever happens um, and if he is then like he's not going to come cheap because of the other interest in him so that is kind of like that's where the boats could be pushed out is if we get the Kettler which is why he'll probably be playing in Milan <laughs> um, oh, and we'll end up boom. with I don't know Shea Adams instead of Tyler Adams or whatever and uh um, 
Yeah, some, uh, another a fake camera. But. Jerry Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, would he be allowed to do his own commun- interviews or would they do a different voiceover? Yeah, another great him? communicator. Um, just going back into the tittle tattle, uh, do you see the links? I think this is in the last 24 hours. Zach Sturge, young left back at Brighton. No. Do you want him? Don't yeah. know anything about this. Given the issues at left back. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of him. Or seen that rumor. So they, they do need a left back in the twenty threes, don't they? And you could argue that we do need a left back in the uh, in the senior squad. Mm, I mean, very good. Davis is back, isn't he? We'll come on to the preseason stuff in a minute, but he he has well, returned. Well, let's talk about that then, because we've seen the players back in training and we've seen the new training kit, which is uh, which is fun. Everyone's had an opinion on that. The, the, bl- the black blue can't quite tell if it's is it Wolves Hull. What are we going for? It, it looks very Hullish on Jackie. I thought. Mm. I don't mind it overall though. It's only training gear in it. I don't really, I mean, I don't really, I'm, I'm a grown man. I don't I care. Can, I can't care too much. They'll bring out another bunch before Christmas anyway, don't they? Training gear on the last like we change it three times. So they'll bring out a new bunch before Christmas, which might or might not be available for a week in March. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on in triple XL only. <laughs> I'm more concerned by the return of, of Karma Gold on one of the coaching jackets, which mm. seems to be a little bit of a a disgusting take on it. I think Adidas is um, tribute. The Adidas swatch for that is sand. Hmm. So I think of nice, pleasant beaches and um, things like that. Okay. If you want to camouflage yourself on a pleasant beach. Yep. That's the thing to wear. Exactly yeah. that. It does look... It might kind you, can, of, you could do uh, that thing where, you know, you know, you used to like bury dad in the sand up to his neck or whatever. It would look like that, wouldn't it? You'd be able to tell me like a chameleon. It kind of matches the paths up at Leeds Beckett that they're walking along. It's like he's uh, coordinated with the ground. The players we've seen all look thin anyway, so that's good. No one's turned up fat as far as I can gather so well done well done to you lot uh, but yeah we've not seen we've not seen the internationals back yet have we so Strauch and Cock with kind of matching little beards I don't know if that's an indication they're going to be playing together at the centre of defence that they've they've paired them up we saw a nice thumbs up from uh, from Rodrigo with his uh, with his nice backpack you liked his backpack didn't you Moscow I liked his whole outfit there's it's, an article on the blog isn't there there is yeah because I thought um, I'd see what they, they were wearing, particularly because uh, Pascal is wearing a very eye-catching Art That Kills uh, t-shirt from gallery department that he paid hundreds of pounds for, and Luke Ayling also paid a lot of money for that um, hoodie. I think Pat Bamford might have got his hoodie for free because Places and Faces is like a it's quite a known um, hip hop brand, but this is their collaboration with Call of Duty, so it's like it's both. Um, like a Tyler the Creator style um, clothing line but also computer games and I feel like Pamford just exists right in between the middle of those two but then old Rodrigo that t-shirt he's wearing is uh, £35 and the backpack's 30 quid. And it's a, still expensive for me 35 quid for a t-shirt Is it the same backpack that Dora the Explorer has? Uh, no this is a Space Jam uh, Tune Squad backpack um, and I, I don't know in a world where 16 year old players have Louis Vuitton wash bags that they're rocking around to see Rodrigo turning up, giving a little thumbs up with his backpack over both shoulders and probably his best t-shirt that he's made. So if I, he probably actually, because he is sponsored by Nike, um, so I bet you can get any of that for free. So he's gone through the Nike entire range. Like us with the merch, Michael. You can have absolutely anything you want and he's picked out a £30 t-shirt. I did like Pascal's t-shirt as well, but then I looked that up and it was 290 quid. So yeah, it's I probably won't bother. Those uh, the the guy who designs those says you you shouldn't look at the price ticket first because you've got to consider them as art pieces, not uh, just apparel. It's a t-shirt. So that's I've, where you. I've, making really, a I've really got to consider though whether I have 300 pounds spare for a t-shirt. Because I, mean, I, I like that t-shirt you've got on Michael, mm. uh, which says "Keep Fighting," which is like the old um, sign they had in in Reeve's dressing mm. room. I like that. It's got a nice peacock on the back. It says keep fighting again on the back. Not three hundred pounds. Would buy that if it was three hundred quid. Wouldn't. <laughs> Where yeah, would you buy it from though? If you wanted that t-shirt. Oh, I mean, you could just go to the squareball.net forward slash merch, couldn't you? Mm, that's that would probably be my uh, way. And you wouldn't only see that t-shirt there. You'd say lo- you'd see lots of other t-shirts there that are all pretty good. Well, not just pretty good. Great, in fact. Mm, now we've done that grubby bit of uh, <laughs> salesmanship. Back to the uh, to the players, and uh, there's the ones who are not back yet as well. Like um, Melier is he in Zanzibar. He is feeding turtles. Wow. He's, we said I think we've covered his holiday last year. He's, that, he's it looked, here. that it looked great, and he's done it again. He's by far the best holiday. Yeah. I mean, Jackie's looked all right. In fairness, with his, 
overlooking the sea on his massive private villa with a pool and, and his beautiful girlfriend his beautiful girlfriend it's probably had his dog there as well just for <sighs> tie us a minute I mean that looked fine too but I'd rather be with Melier have you seen that um, so Melier's hanging around with turtles have you seen that Rafinha's hanging around with the rat he is isn't he hey like the ninja turtles uh, he's with Deco um, and they seem to be having get your fucking voice out of his ear <laughs> seems to have a, a jolly nice time wherever they are he's just the uh, Brazilian Jody Morris isn't he um, yeah so is he Portuguese Deco yeah, he's Portuguese, Portuguese Brazilian, Brazilian, Brazilian yeah. yeah, he played for Portugal, didn't he? Internationally. Yeah. And Chelsea, which just goes to show the character of the man. I tried to block that part out, but that's the, the Jody Morris. It's, um, it's all yeah. sickening, isn't it? Well, it won't be our problem soon. Horrible little rat fucking twat. Unless we want to get under there. Well, I mean, he did bring Rafinha to us, didn't he? And now under, he's under taking much, him under, away. Under much the same circumstances. Yeah. We knew this was always going to be the ending. However, we resent it deeply. Hmm. That's what happens when you go out with a cheater. So they're not going to change. They're we've not going to change. We've got some shiny new toys now anyway to care. And that's that's what needs to happen at Leeds United. We need to rip the plaster off, get these players sold, but for maximum value, and then give us some new shiny baubles to look at, like Brendan Aronson, mm. who, um, tiny Brendan, hit a massive drum in Philadelphia. That seems to be the consensus. Couldn't tell whether this was a, a tiny human or a massive drum or maybe both. He got a good noise out of it, though, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He did. So we know he can do that. It's the uh, Philadelphia Union who he used to play for. Is is that an MLS thing over there? Yeah. Um, before he went off to, to Europe and then arrived at Leeds. And uh, his brother still plays for them. Yep. The old Paxton. Paxton, so we can sign him soon. Should we sign him? Mm. Mm. Uh, He's and he supposed hit, to be pretty good, but he, then they're all supposed to be pretty good. He hit a big drum. Would you advocate hitting a big drum in the centre circle at Ellen Road? This is a drum that requires wheels to move it around, by the way. <laughs> I don't think we need it. We're Leeds United. We don't need a drum. Yeah, culturally, it, it's not a good fit. No, there's. I mean, I'm not talking about a drum in the stands like the Sheffield Wednesday nonsense that they tried to inflict on us in the 1990s. I'm talking about a massive fucking drum. No, even worse. The the bigger it is, the worse it is. Right. Okay, fine. I mean, any instrument you'd be up for us banging in the centre circle. I mean, Deco. <laughs> <laughs> Get him in the middle of the pitch and give him a good old kicking. What about bringing back? Douglas, the little trombone in Barry, the little uh, the little trombone. Oh, Johnny! No, I was thinking about the little uh, trombone in Butterman. Mm. Who, if you are over a certain age, you'll remember they sponsored the East Standard Lure Pack, and Douglas um, came down, didn't he? In yeah, his, he used to walk around. Yeah, and he was tromboning down by the side, mm. <laughs> side of the pitch. Lovely, lovely, uh, more innocent time. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> trombone. In front we've, of not got, we've not got a sponsor actually. Have we speaking what? of East Stand? Trombone in front it's, of the family stand. What? It's naked, isn't it? The East Stand at the moment. It is. Yeah, yeah. The flanks of it. Yeah. Um, Sean of of that big sponsorship band, High Sense, wasn't it? Mm. That were on the uh, that were on the side of that. So uh, maybe we're getting a new telly supplier. Uh, we'll see soon enough. I'm glad about that because I was never comfortable seeing a fridge freezer on the side of that stand. Just a picture of a fridge was never. It was never my first choice for uh, for ground decoration. The um, I was the internet was failing me just now, but um, the the fella standing next to Philadelphia uh, Union's Brendan Aronson, or it's ours now, but Brendan Philadelphia Union's drum as it is being beat by Brendan is uh, Fang. So I was trying to look out. He's uh, uh, was born as a normal snake. On the oh, banks. is that the mascot thing? I was, I was, I'll be honest, I was worried I was seeing that. Uh, oh. was, he was born a normal <laughs> snake on the banks of the Delaware River, but he only ever had one dream, which was to play soccer. Right. Uh, he the loves the game. Snake. Well, does he not, is he not aware of the uh, Gary Monk thing that happened? Well, this is it. He's followed in his footsteps. Um, he's got similar straw-coloured hair. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's him. <laughs> I, had to, I had to leave it there because the internet broke. <laughs> it's back now, so I can tell you more about him. One day... Uh, yes, he loves the game and tries to play, but he's a snake, so he has trouble kicking the ball. One day, Fang finds a union flag, inspired by the join or die rag, uh, flag, not rag, flag, sorry. That's a terrible <laughs> thing to have said. His mother tells him that his great, 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 great grandfather posed for Ben Franklin when Ben drew the original cartoon Snake on the Flag. Ben Frank, I've no idea where this is going. Anyway, it's a snake that plays football, so yeah, it's basically it's Gary Monk. Ellie the elephant never had a backstory. It was no. just it sounds a bit like Ellen Road. So. Yeah, and then Lucas the cop cat. It's just it's a, the the tribute to Lucas rather be that he always wanted. <laughs> yes, please please name a seven foot snow leopard after me. I'm sure we could have fashioned something for Ellie the elephant. I'm thinking trunk down the well, 
spraying water on kids that would have been fun wouldn't it but no I can't I can't get there I mean this gets very he gets struck by lightning at some point <laughs> while he's flying a kite I don't know how he's flying a kite if he's got no arms and legs um, <laughs> anyway uh, yes um, Fang leaps in the air after electricity sizzles down the kite string in a puff of blue smoke he's gone all that's left is a metallic egg that looks a bit like a soccer ball a hungry fox bats the egg around <laughs> and it rolls into Subaru Park <laughs> so we, at least we know that uh, the, the ground this, sponsorship was in place Philadelphia Union the LSD years <laughs> where a mysterious but friendly animal loving employee puts it in their car and drives it to the Philadelphia Zoo the zoo loves all animals Fucking but they hell. don't recognise this strange metallic egg um and then, uh, but the union know that Subaru Park is a magical place, so they check in on the egg every day. It's growing bigger. One day, the zoo calls up and says the egg is starting to hatch. Philadelphia Union Captain Alejandro Bedoya desperately wants to know what is inside the egg. So along with the rest of the union and a large group of children, he heads down to the zoo. As the egg's shell cracks, a zoo scientist rushes in with incredible news. The soccer boots that Fang had tied to the kite had traces of human DNA on them, and the lightning strike combined that human DNA <laughs> with, with Fang's snake DNA. <laughs> now everybody is staring at the egg and wondering what could possibly come out. Uh, blue smoke rolls and billows out of the egg, and then a snake walks out of the egg and waves his arms in the air to greet <laughs> Ali Badoya and all the children that came to see him. It's Fang, but now he has arms, legs, and a super rad mohawk. One of the children throws Fang a soccer ball. He tries to juggle it, but his legs are still too new to work well. Um, oh, that's not a sign of Brendan Aronson's first weeks. But Doyle juggles instead, and Fang rugs, uh, runs to hug and high-five the kids as they cheer for him. On that day, Fang made a promise to be the biggest, best, and most dedicated union soccer fan in the world and to get just a bit better at soccer each and every day. Now he wakes up in Subaru Park and happily spends his days teaching soccer, playing soccer, and making new friends. If you see him, come say hello. Fucking hell. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> that is... So Fang's origin story... Just say you wanted a snake. <laughs> yeah, there's a snake. Kids ben, pestered me into it. Ben Franklin drew one on the flag, so we've got one in the ground. It's 560 words, that. There's a snake, but it's very difficult to have a man dressed as a snake and slither around a pitch. <laughs> so we had to find a way of putting legs on him. <laughs> Otherwise, you just have a man writhing around. You, see, you have kids. I would pay to get, see that. Just get yourself to the east stand. It's going to take me like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Still slither, <laughs> slithering around the edge of the pitch. The game's kicked off. <laughs> you, you, uh, you guys have kids. Yeah. yeah. If they saw a mascot and it was a snake, but he had arms and legs, they'd say, "Why does he have arms and legs?" If you just said, "Because he's a magic snake," would they just be like, "Fine." Yeah. They don't yeah. need all that. Do they, they don't need a backstory. Ben uh, Franklin. Who's Ben Franklin? <laughs> I was just going to say that that reminded of the quote from, from Jurassic Park when I heard all that about that DNA exchange, which good, mm -hmm. God knows where that DNA is coming from and where it's going to. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. I, mean, so. I don't know who this guy is. This is I think this is Gritty, who seems to be... Oh, Gritty is famous. Yeah, Gritty he, is he's, sort of, he's some sort of orange thing who seems to be... Um, Waving at the crowd there. I don't, I don't even, We'll maybe get into his backstory next week. I feel as Gritty's backstory is um, already. Gritty's great, actually. He's one of the <laughs> best around. A real, a real genuine guy. The, maybe, there's an extra, a, maybe there's an extra ball in this and we can just the best. stop for now. But um, wow, that took a bit of a left turn, didn't it? Well, we, you know, we needed to know we've got a Melier on Safari and Aronson doing similar things with uh, his old mates at Philadelphia Union. You can see the, the snake is on the big drum that he's banging. Mm. I don't know how Fang felt watching him beating his ancestor with a big stick, but I guess that's uh, that's Philadelphia for you. I'm going to go and see how fast I can move on my belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on that bombshell. Uh, let's wrap it up for, <laughs> there for this week. Thanks for that, Moscow, for the full unabridged um, story of, what was it, Fang? Fang, yeah, Fang the Snake. I'm now um, finding out his mates. He's got a mate called Mo, who is a playful, fun-loving monster, and Mumbles the Great, the most powerful wizard of Math Magica. Um, oh, and then Orby, <laughs> who loves strawberries, um, who has his best buddy dog, Pup, who have learned that their local mountain is sick. Just, I don't know if that's like sick, as in it's great. Yeah, just sick. we need to stop. We need to stop. look. Look, kids, don't go near Lucas the Snow Leopard. He'll rip your face off. That's the end of it. There's a there's like a Where's Wally game here that says, can you find Fang, Linus, Sylvester, and Winifred amongst the large crowds? That might keep me quiet for a bit. We'll go look for them. 
and bid you farewell. What kind of animal do you think Linus is? A lion. Got it in one. We'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye. The Square Ball Podcast.